Hi, I'm Dean Cummings. Um, I started my career out when I was young. I committed to uh, wanting to make a living in the mountains, and so I uh, started going in the mountains and rock climbing and buying all the gear, um, and began to start figuring out how to get certifications and things like that. The best uh, thing that ever happened to me was going in the mountains when I was 14 with the Santa Fe Mountain Center, climbing 14,000 foot peaks and rafting um, rivers in Utah. And it was really neat because it showed me that there's guys out there that can make a living at it. And it was guys like Kenny Sims. And he, this guy really pulled me in under his wing and you know showed me and told me how, how you can do it. Um, so when I got out of high school, I went off to Utah and I got a job doing seismic work and I was working with helicopters doing remote mechanized operations and my job on that um, on seismic was um, going out with the helicopter and building landing zones and setting up locations to drop explosives for doing the seismic work and it was neat I got to go out with this guy named Duffy and I got to learn just about everything to do with uh, mountain flying and uh, remote guided aircraft operations and then um, I went on to make the US ski team and then I um, got invited to the World Extreme Skiing Championships and I went up to Valdez Alaska and I'm in the land of more helicopters than anywhere in the world because of oil production and oil production was on the decline and so helicopters were looking for a job so um, as a mountain guide I got approached by Brian Blixhaven of Era Helicopters and people were already asking me to guide them and guides were already asking me to to start a company and so it all came together I started a company in uh, 1995 after five years of doing pretty extensive research and development on the mountains in the Chugach range um, just around Valdez Alaska pretty amazing place it's uh, gets 100 feet of snow a year and has 30 percent of the world's separate glaciers so these mountains are just so young they've just literally been lifted out of the um, out of the ground by this by the Pacific plate coming in just flush and just causing uplift so they're super young jagged mountains so the snow really hooks up to them well because a lot of anchoring so I started guiding people out in these mountains and we started opening up terrain and um, it kind of became competitive where uh, Doug Coombs and I and a few others knew that he had the best operations and safety um, safety record was going to win the permits. I ended up winning the permits and it wasn't any more than uh, some of the protocols that I developed and they were top down terrain management protocols and that helicopters aren't out in the mountains just to go out there and land and have the pilot try to figure out everything. What we did was we connected the guide with the pilot and we worked out some protocols um, where it's more about remote mechanized guided aircraft operations. So the pilot and the guide are working together on short finals and landing the helicopter and guides are establishing landing zones and building safe landing zones and reference points for wind direction and wind speed and better reference for in the snow and so i started my company in 1995 and we ended up winning this amazing permit through the u.s forest service and started um taking people out further and further and pioneering new regions and um, new runs and this is in a mountain range that pretty lucky to have gotten into these mountains um, because only 2% of the mountains have name on a map and only 2% of the glaciers have a name on a map. So we're out there naming glaciers and naming mountains and putting in new ski runs and new landing zones. Um, I got into the, into the business and what I realized was my business partner slash wife and really the family that I married into was uh, a corporate takeover machine. They were literally selling my assets off to people from within their families, like uh, out of Lake Forest, Illinois, and Utah, and Idaho, of all places. And they became my clients, and my um, employees kind of became my competitors. 
and it got pretty wild. Um, well, I've got the best safety record and the most training of any opera in the world. Um, I think a lot of what helped me was I was getting perpetrated on by people trying to steal my assets of my company and and literally cause sabotage in my company with the helicopters and and um, equipment and things like that. And I caught every single one of them until I really got in deep, you know, and that was meeting up with um, this guy named Paul Moore. Um, he's from, he was my uh, wife's um, oldest, oldest sister's husband. He's a corporate takeover maggot, basically, that uh, does project takeover, perpetrates on families and, and uh, takes over estates, um, perpetrates on businesses to take over corporations and projects. And involved with literally trafficking humans and and pharmaceutical drugs, getting out of them out on the streets. That um, kind of brings in the other players into this. That would be Senjay Patel of Acorn Laboratories, the Quack and Bushes of Quack and Bush Pharmaceuticals and Chemicals. Um, and uh, the crazy part about the Quack and Bushes is their um, attorneys, their family law attorneys. So. Pretty bad combination having um, chemicals and and pharmaceutical laboratories involved with um, family law firms. I um, it's pretty obvious that turns into pretty large dollar signs. So I ended up exposing some of this, and I got to meet the rest of the the players in this. This is um, multi generations families that know how to make millions of dollars off of citizens and corporations and municipalities. And that brought in, um, you know, Landis Martin. Landis Martin owns uh, Platte River Equity, um, Crown Communications, 80% of the world, the country's cell phone towers. Um, pretty, pretty much the most amazing, easy hacking situation in the world. And MFG Chemicals. And MFG Chemicals are horrible chemicals. These are what they produce in this in this chemical plant is uh, phosphates and organic phosphates and just horrendous things um, then I got to meet up with uh, the Nyquist and the Nyquist are also family law firm people and they were part of the Moody Blues Bible Institute and uh, they've all developed their families um, well I'll, I'll introduce the rest of the families then it's the Selby's um, the Griffiths um, and then it's the Hendersons the Kimball's Ted Kimball um, John Cumming um, and let's see uh, Lane the Lane family Adam Lane um, and then the Vandermeulens Dan Vandermeulen um, who else did we have Price's. there yeah the Price family the Moores um, I mentioned the Moores okay um and then uh, Sotheby's. The Sotheby's. Um, and there was a couple more. Let me think about Kimball, this. Kimball, Halverson. I, I mentioned okay. Ted Kimball. Um, in Idaho. Then it was the Peruses, the Jeff Peruses and the Joel Sierras. And these are the attorneys that help invest money and help people put money in the right place to hide it and to invest it and diversify it so it's not so obvious where you're putting it and what how much you're making and then it was um platte river equity and it was uh cbre out of beverly hills um matt ritman ritman financial um blue flame financial blue flame um, realty investments and uh jake kilgro and kilgro realty might possibly Price funding and there's a connection there with um jackson hole property um, and then it goes on to Telluride to O'Neill's, Brian O'Neill of Telluride Properties. Um, and then there's construction firms. It's the Layton, the Layton family construction company out of Utah and California. And then um, uh, the guy out of California is, um, oh, what was that guy's name? Yeah, you had the Rittmans and who else was uh, there? Uh, the um, Antu Soretti, he's the construction firm out of uh, Lake Tahoe. Then and the you got, Fultons were out of there you too. You got Neil right? Ringstad out of Telluride, um, and I can't remember his company exactly. 
And then I got Hamilton out of uh, Denver, Colorado, and out of Valdez, Alaska. So basically, here's how it works. They literally profile people. They use databases, and they use other means to target people that have wealth and assets paid for. And they, um, they figure out their vulnerabilities. They figure out what... They even figure out where they can sell this asset to, like a corporation or a project, or a person's business lifestyle, home, property, everything. And they literally, they literally broker citizens of America's assets out and sell it. Um, they perpetrate um, also divorces. This is Kathy Moore, um, Mary Beth Griffith, Karen, Karen Stokes, um, Kyle. Kyle Lieberman, um, let's see, Gabriella Palco, Jessica Nelson, um, Jessica Bullock. Um, the other think. Palco. Gabriella Palco. What was her sister's name or cousin? Gabriella I mean, Palco. The M. Palco was M. And these guys are the people on the ground. The, you know, these uh, Jonah Marie Price, which is a Henderson. And they use their charm and their their skills um, and their good looks and their everything to in, to get into people's lives, um, get into understanding their identity, understanding their their projects, their future goals, especially their vulnerabilities, and they make millions and billions of dollars. And they've really turned it into a racket where they're now tying together other countries that want to get a uh, to make changes in the u.s and have a piece of the the pie um they're bringing in the flds groups literally the cult groups um and in this military facet um what did you call that that's more of yeah there's definitely um ex-military uh people i mean definitely jaber alaska uh, alaska there seems to be a connection there i mean Former CIA, former um, FBI, it appears current FBI agents. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, I mean it's it's pretty uh, uh, disheartening. So, I ended up opening this um, this window um, because I was on rails in Valdez, Alaska, and I was getting ready to build the largest vertical foot tram in North America um, through a, through the city. Was all excited to diversify away from oil. Or alongside oil, so to speak, um, building a beautiful float plane base and offer outdoor education through a university called um, the Prince William Sound Community College. Um, start using the airport that we had that was built for jets, but no jets have ever come in. So we could actually start getting people there and share with them this incredibly untouched wilderness so people get a profound respect on why we need to protect it start doing more outdoor studies programs, start doing more science studies programs. And this college has 13 students and has rooms for at least 350 students. So it's been a smoke and mirrors federally funded university. And it would be the ultimate, um, the ultimate example of what you can do to diversify a community and vote and use and have your assets become the future of this community. And those assets are are really the outdoors and um, subsistence living, you know, gathering your own fish and hunting your own moose. Um, the university, I didn't mention this, is important. This would bring people into a place with 30% of the world's glaciers with the most diverse climate change situation going on where we have some glaciers that are growing and glaciers that are receding on the coastline. Um, and it's untouched, you know, and. What we got to do is talk about and focus on climate change and and teach people a bit more about glaciology to understand the effects of climate and a glacier is the best way to do it because it's one of the most um, extreme visuals you can paint to somebody when you show them a glacier that's receding 10 miles in 10 years. Um, so I ended up basically on rails about to pull all this off and um these guys got themselves exposed not just through me but through their just their karma and how how crass they were about what they were doing 
And they're basically trying to destroy everything, everyone like me that could prove them wrong or could come in and and change things for the better to diversify a community is and turn it into the example of what all the other communities, towns and cities can do in Alaska and in America, in Canada, in Europe even, um, to really make these towns use their assets that they have without drilling it cutting it down or, or mining it um, or building pipelines to it. We all know there's enough energy just to harness with um, water and, and wind and sun. And all we really got to do is make these communities that have assets that make the community a wonderful place that people want to move to and start their second generations and be proud of what they have and share. And so I'm kind of running into a brick wall. I'm running into the, the Bill Walkers of the world. He was the, the attorney of Valdez. He embezzled our town. He embezzled our state of $138 million. Um, he embezzled North Pole, Alaska. Um, he's built an empire of corruption, and that corruption is um, the attorney general, um, uh, the deputy district attorney, de- de- deputy uh Attorney, Attorney General. General. Yeah. Um, his name is Robert Henderson. Um, he's um, working with horrendous attorneys to try to keep it quiet, the, 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 the program going. Uh, and it's literally horrible. It's The program of corruption up there. Yeah, they're trying to keep this, the status quo of corruption and oil, gas, and drilling and and it's the only way they're well, not going to get caught. But let, let me ask you this. But hold uh, on, let me finish the attorneys. Okay. So what they did is they teamed up with attorneys, and these are the Quackenbushes, and these are the Hendersons, and these are the the Linda Lamones, and these are the the Nyquists, and these are the the uh, John Shermans, and and you know malpractice attorneys. Um, and family law attorneys and what they can do with that with the police these, right did yeah, we, maybe so, you covered that so yeah and so what they can do with security firms the new security firm is highly trained people with hacking and knowing how to use chemicals and drugs to to offset people and to get what they want and destroy people quickly and make pretty much take all their assets away from them in a short time frame and use the use the judiciary system, the court system,